All righty. So thanks everyone for tuning in and thank you so much for, I guess, uh, your support and just want to introduce myself briefly. My name is Dr. Daryl Boyd. I am a scientist, I'm a chemist specifically. I work at the Naval Research Lab in Washington, DC. My background is in inorganic chemistry, which is not to be confused with organic chemistry. Uh, I spend a lot of time doing science outreach all over the country, uh, specifically in my area, though I do quite a bit. I work at after school programs and I work at some elementary schools. And I thought that it would be just uh, a good thing to, to do this for the next couple of weeks. I actually am teleworking, so I'm doing this in my break time. But uh, because I'm teleworking, I'm at home, I have my cameras, my setup and everything, so I can go ahead and just do this uh, during my break. And hopefully it is a benefit to all the par parents who are all of a sudden being thrust into homeschooling. And, and so I just want to help you all out. Also, just want to let you know who I am. I am married. I have a wonderful wife and a wonderful four month old daughter. And so if you hear a baby crying in the background, that's what that is. And we can go ahead and get started. Oh, I want to set the ground, I guess, like ground rules for, for this. Uh, basically, the demonstrations and experiments that we'll be doing, you should be able to follow along with. Now, I recognize you may not have everything at home that I'm going to use, but most of the items can be found around your home. And I know on Instagram, and maybe it's true on Facebook Live too, everything is kind of reversed and flipped. I do have on this board back behind me though, what it is that you would need for today's experiment. So I will just tell you what that is. You will need two glasses, like, a, like glasses that you would drink out of. You'll need two pieces of hard candy. That is these uh, peppermint candies. I'm using peppermint. If you have something like Skittles or something like that, I believe it should work as well. And you'll need vegetable oil. You don't have vegetable oil, you can use baby oil too, I suppose. Um, but I'm using vegetable oil and you'll need water. And the amount of vegetable oil and the amount of water, you'll need half of one half cup of each, okay? So in addition to the uh, utensils that you'll need, Today, before we really get rolling on the experiment, we're going to discuss the basics of science for all the youngsters out there. And so uh, for the young people, I just, I want you to truly be inspired to continue taking an interest in science, whether or not it's a career move for you or something that you wanna pursue later on in life. Do take interest in science because science is really important. So the basic rules for today that will govern what we do for the next two weeks starts with the most important and the most fundamental thing that all scientific researchers have to be concerned with, and that is safety, okay? Safety is the most important thing to do whenever you're running a scientific reaction, a chemical reaction, no matter where you are, you want to be safe, you must be safe. And the safety is not just for yourself, but it's also for those around you. You don't wanna harm other people and you certainly don't wanna harm yourself. So as it relates to safety, here are just some things that are common that we use in a laboratory. First thing, we like to cover up our eyes because uh, you can get, uh, eye, your eyes can splash, your, uh, you can get something to splash to your eyes, gases can get in there and you don't want to have that be the case. So what you do is you cover up your eyes, okay? Now these are splash goggles. Here I have uh, safety glasses. I always wear safety glasses no matter what lab I go into. So before I go into the, a lab that I am not familiar with, I'll put these safety glasses on. It may be the case that I need splash goggles, but at the point that I'm walking in, I might not know that, which is why I'll have on just the the uh, the safety glasses. Once I determine I need splash goggles, I'll go get splash goggles and put them on. So eye protection is really important. And hold on for just one moment. I guess uh, some people are having a hard time getting on Instagram. So let me make sure 
that we are up and rolling on Instagram. All righty. Okay, all right. So we're gonna go live again on Instagram. I'm sorry, I apologize to those who are who are waiting out there. Someone else remarking on Facebook, they're trying to follow me on Instagram live and they couldn't see it. Okay, so I am back. My apologies. So we we're talking about safety, and in addition to eye protection, we often wear gloves. For our hands, obviously you don't want to touch a lot of things with your hands. And so you wear gloves. You don't want to touch chemicals. You don't want to touch compounds. You don't want to touch things that are going to be harmful to you. And so you wear the gloves for that purpose. The other thing that we often wear are lab coats. We wear lab coats because we want to protect our body. We want to protect our clothing from from catching on fire. Most lab coats are actually flame retardant. And so um, when I say I protect my clothes, your clothes may catch on fire easily, but having a lab coat on will allow you some level of flame retardancy, which is a great thing when you're dealing with fire in the laboratory. So again, for all the young people out there who will be following us for the next couple of weeks, uh, as it pertains to safety, you wanna remember that anytime you have a liquid that could splash, you'll put on splash goggles. Anytime you're handling chemicals that uh, could be harmful, you wanna have gloves on. And you, anytime you're running a reaction, you'd like to have a lab coat on if the reaction uh, requires it. Okay, so that is first and foremost important. I will tell you that for the next couple of weeks, as we do these demonstrations, the only one that I have planned to do that will require you to wear what we call personal protective equipment or all the safety gear will take place next week, Friday. I'll be doing a, a reaction that requires some, uh, some reagents that, that are a little bit dangerous. And so you'll see, I'll have my splash goggles on and I'll be wearing gloves for that one. Other than that, the rest of these, you should be perfectly fine to, to do them at home without glass uh, gloves or without the glasses. Now, the next thing that I want you to follow along and do each and every day that we do these is bring your lab notebook. Okay. It is important for a scientist to write in a lab notebook and to maintain it consistently. So your lab notebook, you write the following things in your lab notebook. You write what you're doing, okay, the what's. So the first thing, what is the question I am trying to answer? You write that down. The next thing, what do I need to answer this question? Like what are the things that I'll need in order to answer the question? You write that down. Next, you write down your hypothesis, okay? And what is a hypothesis? Well, a hypothesis in the simplest of terms is an idea that you can test, okay? An idea that you can test. If it's easier to remember it this way, some people think of a hypothesis as an educated guess, which is not quite uh, complete enough of an answer, but the word guess, if it makes it easier for you to remember, you could think of a hypothesis as a guess you can test, all right? A guess you can test. It's very important to write your hypothesis down because then you'll have what you need to answer it. You'll have the thought in your mind like, this is what I'm trying to figure out. What do I need to answer it, all right? So the, the other thing that's very, very important to use to write down in your notebook is what are your variables and what are your controls, okay? You really want only one variable. That is one thing that will change uh, in your reaction, from reaction to reaction. One thing. I'm looking at one specific aspect of this question. All right. And we will see that today. So the controls, these are things that I want to make sure they're all the same. Okay. We'll talk more about variables and controls as we get started with the experiment. Okay. So as I mentioned before, for today's experiment, here's what you'll need. You'll need two glasses, 
All right. Try to have two that are the same size, similar in size and shape. All right. You need two hard candies. I'm using peppermints. Okay. Peppermints work really well for this demonstration. If you have another hard candy, like Jolly Ranchers, for example, if you have two green Jolly Ranchers, roughly the same size, uh, you can use that as well. You will also need oil, like cooking oil, or vegetable oil. So I have some, some cooking oil here. And you'll also need some water. You'll just have to trust me on this. There's water in this cup. So let's get started with today's experiment. The other thing that is really important to write in your notebook is a protocol. And so I have in my protocol that I need to take one half cup of oil and add it to one of my glasses. All right. So for those who got here early, you'll see I have my cup, my measuring cup. I have a glass and I'm going to take some oil, pour it into the measuring cup, and then I'll pour it into the the glass, all right? All right, for the folks on Instagram, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but there it is, all right? So I am, I put one half cup of oil into this glass here. I'll actually try to bring this down a little bit so folks on Facebook Live can see it. All right, now, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to take a half a cup of water and put it in the other glass. I'm going to use a different measuring cup because I don't want to contaminate the water with oil because that can affect my reaction. So I have a quarter cup here. And I'll do that twice so that I have a half cup. All right, so I have water, half a cup of water here. I have vegetable oil, half a cup of vegetable oil. And again, I have these two peppermint candies. Now, I mentioned before there are variables and there are controls. The controls that I'm considering are, I'm using glasses that are similar in size and in shape, I use the same volume of liquid. So there is one half cup of water as well as one half cup of vegetable oil. I'm also using the same or similar kinds of candies, okay? Now, if I were in the laboratory, I would actually take the candies before adding them to these fluids. I would measure their weight, I would weigh them and find out how much each one weighs before the reaction starts. That way, if I have peppermint candies left over after the, the experiment, I can weigh them and find out if their mass changed at all. All right. Now, what is my question? The question that I'm trying to answer? Well, the question is this, and for those of you that have notebooks and are old, old enough to read and to write, write your question down in your lab notebook. The question is, will the peppermint candy dissolve faster in water or will it dissolve faster in vegetable oil? Okay. Will the peppermint candy dissolve faster in the water or will it dissolve faster in the vegetable oil? Okay, so that is the question. Now, write your hypothesis down. What do you think? I'm gonna write my hypothesis. My hypothesis is that the peppermint will dissolve faster in the vegetable oil. That is the hypothesis that I have. What's your hypothesis? Whatever it is, write it down. So I'm gonna take a moment just to write it down as you write yours down too.
All right, I've written down my hypothesis and now I'm ready to get going on the experiment. The other variable to consider is this. If I put a peppermint into the vegetable oil first and then wait five minutes before putting my peppermint in the other container with the water in it, then I've added another variable, but I want that these things to be the same. I have a control. So I am going to add the peppermint, one peppermint to each container simultaneously. I want to do this at roughly the same time, okay? Because the length of time that the peppermint is in the fluid has an effect or may have an effect on the outcome. And I want these things to be the same because the only variable that I wanna have is vegetable oil versus water, okay? So here we go. We're gonna take the vegetable, the uh, Peppermints and put one in the vegetable oil and one in the water. We're going to do it at the same time. So if you're following along at home uh, and, and you have a parent with you or a sibling, you can do this together and do it at the same time. All right. Ready, set, go. All righty. So I have one peppermint in water, one peppermint in vegetable oil. Now there is another major variable or potential variable here that I should be paying attention to. I don't want it to exist. I want to use it as a control. I want to control for this factor. Can you think of what that is? All right. I will tell you, temperature is very important. So I want the vegetable oil and the water to be the same temperature. Why? because the temperature of the fluid may have an effect on the outcome. And so I only want to know the answer to the question, which fluid will dissolve the peppermint the fastest? Because that is what I'm trying to answer. I don't want temperature to be a factor. So if you wanna try this later on, what you should do is either get a thermometer where you can measure the temperature yourself and determine whether or not the two fluids are the same. Or you can take a half cup of water and a half cup of room uh, of vegetable oil, leave them in the same room for several hours, and then try this experiment. Because if they're in the same room, we can assume uh, that they will reach an equilibrium point in terms of temperature. They will reach a common temperature. That will be a reasonable assumption as long as you allow both fluids to be in the same room uh, in the same conditions for a significant space of time. So a couple hours should be fine. All right. So it's only been uh, it's been about two minutes and it's hard to see with the, the camera there. So this is for my folks on Facebook. You can see this is water. This is vegetable oil. Uh, for my folks on Instagram, this is the water. This is the vegetable oil. And you might have noticed, and I'll show it to you again in a moment, you might have noticed that the peppermint that was in the vegetable oil looks almost the exact same as when I put it in. However, the one with the water looks like the red color of the peppermint is beginning to come off of the peppermint. So this strongly suggests to me that the water is dissolving the peppermint and the vegetable oil is not dissolving the peppermint. All right. So what else could I do to, to expand this experiment? OK, what else could I do to expand this experiment? Well, I could try a different fluid, right? So you could try the same uh, experiment with rubbing alcohol or with vinegar, or uh, you could try baby oil instead of vegetable oil. And you could ask the same questions, all right? You could ask the same questions. So today we have vegetable oil and we have water. Because we have vegetable oil, 
and we have uh, water, one of them appears to be dissolving the peppermint. One of them is dissolving the peppermint faster than the other. One appears to not be dissolving the peppermint at all. Okay, so what I should say at this point, you should be writing down your observations. Write down your observations in your notebook. I am going to write down that after a couple of minutes, the peppermint seems to be dissolving in the water, but not in the vegetable oil. So take a moment to write this down. All right, did you write that down? Okay, good. All righty. So I'll show you what my, my glasses look like now. Check that out. This is the water. All right. That's for my folks on Instagram. It's the water. And this is the vegetable oil. Okay. So if I were in the laboratory, I could stop this uh, reaction right now. I would take out my peppermint from either uh, container. I would then dry it off. And then I would go back to the scale and weigh each peppermint. I could then look at the difference in the weight if there is in fact a difference in the weight from before we started the reaction to after we started it, or the experiment to after we started the experiment, okay? And then I can make an assessment as to whether or not my hypothesis was right or wrong, okay? Now you may recall my hypothesis was that the vegetable oil would dissolve the peppermint faster than the water. Looks like I was wrong and that's okay. Now I have data. And so I'm gonna write down what my conclusion is and whether or not I believe that my hypothesis is correct. All right, so take a moment to write that down. All right, now let's recap. What is the most important thing for anyone doing scientific research? The most important thing for anyone doing scientific research? That's right, it's safety. Safety is the most important thing to consider when doing scientific research. The ways we stay safe include wearing the proper uh, personal protective equipment. You hear that term sometimes, PPE. That stands for personal protective equipment or safety gear. And I mentioned that one of the more common ones I wear all the time are safety glasses or safety go splash goggles over my eyes. Uh, we wear gloves on our hands and we wear lab coats, all right? So safety is the most important thing. Another thing that's very critical for scientists to do is to write in a lab notebook, okay? Write in a notebook you wanna write down the question that you're trying to answer. You wanna write down what it is that you think you'll need in order to answer that question. You wanna write down your hypothesis and a very simple definition of hypothesis is an idea that you can test, an idea that you can test, okay? Or if it's easier to remember it this way, a guess you can test, a guess you can test. All right, you write your hypothesis down and then you write down what variable you are trying to, to control for and you write down all of your controls. In our experiment today, our controls included using the same volume of liquid in each container. It included using the same kind of candy in each container. It, in, it included using a container, containers that were the same or similar in shape and size, and also 
It included having both fluids be the same temperature. These were our controls. The variable, the single variable was in one container, there was vegetable oil. In the other container, there was water. All right. Now, the other thing you want to write down in your notebook before you start your experiment is your protocol. How are you going to execute your experiment so that you can trust your results? And today our protocol was to pour half a cup of fluid in either container and then to simultaneously add the candy to uh, one to each container. And that had to be done at the same time because the length of time that the candy is in the fluid may have an effect on the outcome of the experiment. And we want to eliminate that as a possibility. All right. So with that, I want to say uh, if you have if you were unable to do this along with me today, you can go to my YouTube channel. I have a version of this experiment and this explanation of what a hypothesis is on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, you can find me at Dr. Boyd, the chemist. That's D.R. Dr. Boyd, B.O.Y.D., the chemist. If you look me up, do subscribe. Uh, this particular experiment, I think, is called, uh, I can't remember, it's something like investigating the hypothesis. <laughs> so uh, in any case, it is posted there. You can check it out. You can follow along. You'll notice there I have three glasses because I had, I think it was vinegar in addition to vegetable oil and water. And you can see if the vinegar dissolves the peppermint candy as well as the water or as poorly as the vegetable oil. And you can try a variation of that as well. There's another concept here, diffusion. We will discuss that in a video in sometime in the next two weeks. I have it in my, in my uh, syllabus for these next two weeks. Please do follow me on Instagram. I just started a new Instagram uh, a couple days ago. It's called science made simple underscore LLC. And I'll be posting fun videos there and snippets from some of the videos I post on YouTube, as well as some photos from the science outreach that I do throughout the community. And hopefully this was beneficial to you. Hopefully parents, uh, you'll have your, your children sit in front of this and, and you can have a moment to just take a breather. And for all the children out there, I really do hope you take an interest in science and that uh, even if you don't do science as a career, that is something that you do highly respect. And I hope to see you all again tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time here and it won't take as long because I won't be laying the groundwork. Don't forget to bring your notebook. Thanks everyone.